Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge of Bugman, and I'm coming to you from the studio, and we're right here in Bugman headquarters. Look, today we're going to talk about black lighting. <clears throat> and if you don't know what black lighting is, check this out, man. This is what we're talking about. Okay, so there you go, all right? That's what we're talking about. So when you hear me talk about black lighting or night lighting or talking about collecting or looking for nocturnal insects, that is the way we do it, okay? Put up some lights, sit back, let the bugs come to you, man. That is cool. I love black lighting. Uh, and most people who have never done it before find out that they like it too, because it is the coolest, simplest way to just bring bugs in and see what kind of insects are, you know, cruising around your backyard or your neighborhood or your properties, <clears throat> wherever you go, man. That's what is neat about it. Kids absolutely love this because it gives them a good excuse to stay up late and you can, you know, feed them and water them and keep them awake all night long and then let them see what kind of insects come in. So lots of kids really dig black lighting as well because there's, it's an overload of two tons of cool bug fun. All right, man. So let's get in because I got a lot I'm going to get done here and I got a little bit of time to get it done. And look, what kind of insects are you going to bring in? Uh, all kinds. All right. You're going to find insects that fly during the daytime are still going to come over and, and come to your lights at nighttime. I've, I've brought in butterflies and dragonflies and lots and lots of bees and wasps and hornets and things that we think are flying around during the day are going to come to lights at nighttime as well. Insects are attracted to ultraviolet light. That's how they see the world. So if you put up ultraviolet light, man, that is how, that's how you do it. That's what insects are gonna come in. So ultraviolet light will bring in more bugs and insects than you expect. There are other nights when I've gone out and set up lights and guess what, man? Nothing, nothing happens. Sometimes you get skunked. That's the way nature works. It's not always 100%. There is a little bit of a Vegas gamble to this. So your best nights, that, you know, the best nights to run lights and attract insects are new moon nights. That means, guess what? New moon means no moon. There's no moon at all because sunlight is ultraviolet light. And if it's bouncing off a big full moon up in the sky, that is going to compete with your lights and you're not going to get as many bugs at your lights. So look for those new moon, go into those, those moon cycle apps and look for a, a period of time when there's new moon and that means it's a dark sky. There's not going to be any moon at all. Run lights on new moon nights. Less moon means more bugs coming to your lights. Simple as that. So I want to try and give you guys an idea of what you need to go black lighting. And, and this gets broad because, look, black lighting can be very, very technical and very, very expensive. Um, or it can be relatively simple and relatively affordable. Uh, you don't have to dump a lot of money into this. It can be, you know, quite simple for, for, for the most part. Okay. Now, when I talk about black lighting, the first thing people think about are the old school black lights. Um, you know, and, and, and kids today don't get it. They don't, they don't know anything about black light posters. They don't know what it was like to turn off all the lights in the bedroom and turn on a black light and watch your, you know, journey poster light up. Um, but those days, Day glow colors that we see out there now that are really commonplace in clothing and fashion stuff, those day glow colors are affected by ultraviolet light, the black lights. Um, these are the old school style black lights. This is not what we're talking about. Don't run down to your, your novelty shops and start buying these kind of bulbs. Um, that's not really what we're talking about. You can try that, and I used to do it when I was a kid, and it would work a little bit, but it wouldn't work as well as the systems now. You can buy modern style black lights. Now, this is a curly Q type that we have in our light bulbs and our lights nowadays. Um, you can still buy even a new, newfangled style of you know black light bulb. Don't go that route yet, okay? Um, there are other ways to do that, but let's talk about UV light real quick. Ultraviolet light 
is this is how insects view the world. They view the world in the ultraviolet spectrum. So they don't see a bright sunny day. Insects flying around during the daytime only see the ultraviolet spectrum. And, and it's, that's, that's just how it is. So when you put up ultraviolet lights, they're attracted to them, especially those nighttime insects. They're gonna come in to ultraviolet lights. So we're gonna use black lights, but we're not gonna use the old school black lights. We're gonna use you know, things that are a little more modern, but a little easier to get. If you wanna go a cheap route, um, and I say that respectively, if you wanna go an, an affordable, inexpensive route, go to yard sales, go to garage sales, and start looking for bug zappers. Okay, old bug zappers. People used to hold the, hang these things up to, to kill mosquitoes and probably people are still doing it now. Don't do that. Stop using bug zappers to kill mosquitoes. They don't kill mosquitoes because mosquitoes are attracted to infrared. They come, they, they're after a carbon dioxide that we exhale and they also come after everything that is warm blooded. They feed on blood, not UV light. So they're not gonna come to UV lights. But put up your bug zappers and then people decide they don't like them anymore and then they get rid of them. They put them in their yard sales. That is perfect. Find those bug zappers in those yard sales. You pick them up. I think this one I bought, I think I got it for like two bucks. All right, there's gonna be a couple screws that you're gonna pull. There's gonna be a couple wires inside. You snip those wires. That allows you to pull off the electrical, uh, that's the cage that electrocutes the insects when they go in there. Okay, pull that cage off of there. And now what you have is essentially a unit and a black light. And you can plug these bulbs in and set these things up and now you have what is going to attract insects not kill them this used to be a black light that would a bug zapper it used to be a bug zapper now you know after you clean all that stuff off of there and you tape up all the holes the bugs and moisture doesn't get in there look man i plug it in and it's good to go and these these things you can pick these things up at some of these yard sales and, and garage sales you can pick up a, an old bug zapper for about five or six bucks Super, super affordable, easy stuff. Invest a little bit of time, plug them into a power source, and you can be attracting insects. Very simple. You know, if you have relatives that have bug zappers, talk to them, see if they even want them anymore. A lot of people keep that stuff because, you know, they might have been expensive at the time, but now they just don't know what really what they want to do with them. Talk to people, use your resources, find those old bug zappers, de-zap them. They're not good for mosquitoes anyway, but they're great for attracting insects. Use those. All right. Now, if you want to take it up a notch, you can go to, you know, you can go on the internet, of course, the internet, you can go to the internet and you can find companies that are going to sell black lighting equipment specifically for insects. My go-to for specifics is BioQuip, uh, B-I-O-Q-U-I-P. Kudos to you and shout out to Aaron over at BioQuip. Look, you can go to those places and you can find equipment that is going to get you right into black lighting specifically. This is a cool light. This is the old school light that BioQuip has sold for many, many years. It's a 15 watt bulb, okay? Basically a little transformer that comes with it and a plug and you plug it into your power source and it runs 15 watts of ultraviolet light. Perfect for attracting insects. This is the same spectrum of light that you're gonna find in a bug zapper. It's a blue black light rather than that dark black bulb that we would use in our you know, bedrooms for black light posters. So the blue black light is what you wanna go with. That's a perfect spectrum for attracting insects. Um, and it's very, very important that you have ultraviolet light if you're looking to attract insects, all right? Because that's what they come to is the ultraviolet light. Cool stuff. These things are not real cheap. They run anywhere from 40 up to 60 bucks. Um, for one of these systems. So you're paying 40 to 60 bucks for, for a, a bulb that's gonna attract bugs. The nice thing about these is, is you can get these in both the AC-DC you know, combo where you can get them where they'll plug into the car adapter or they'll plug in to a regular outlet. Um, I love to have a couple of the, the standard, just straightforward car adapter style. And I use those when I'm traveling uh, a lot because what if I'm on BLM land or I'm somewhere where I don't have access to a power source, how in the world am I going to run lights? Well, that's easy. Plug them into the car adapter, you know, the cigarette lighter in the car, um, and, and you basically have what is now lights to run. And I do that. There's a picture right there. Okay, that was in BLM land in Utah. I was running lights attracting insects. And look how clean and nice that looks. You know, from a distance, that looks beautiful. Okay, so you get it. 40 to 60 bucks later, you can have these lights from the internet, from BioQuip. And that's a that's a 
15 watt bulb, which means it runs really, really light. Doesn't take a lot of juice to run those bulbs. So they're, they're good, they're nice. All right, now BioQuip has since started selling what is a new light bulb. This one right here. This is an ultraviolet light bulb. And the cool thing is it doesn't have the big long cords. It doesn't have the, all oh, this mess. It doesn't have that. On top of that, this is a 20 watt bulb. So now this little bulb has more light than the 15 watt bulb. At the same time, all you need to run this, this light bulb is a regular light socket. You basically screw it in and you turn it on and you make it work. And now you're attracting, you know, bugs and insects with ultraviolet light. Super simple, super good. And guess what, man? These light bulbs, they sell for about 20 bucks. How, you, how can you do better than that? 20 bucks, you're running, you're running UV light. Super, super cool. All right? Cool. So now we can talk about mercury vapor. Mercury vapor is a bigger deal than UV light um, because mercury vapor is harder to find now because mercury vapor bulbs used to be very common. All the security lights, all the buildings, all the parking lots all had mercury vapor. A lot of, a lot of stadiums, uh, the big football I mean, sports arena stadiums, probably are still using mercury vapor bulbs just because they haven't revamped their entire light system for the millions of dollars it's going to cost to do that. But everybody's slowly converting over from mercury vapor over to LED because obviously LED is the new thing. LED runs on a minimal amount of juice um, and LED also doesn't have mercury. Mercury vapor bulbs are slowly going extinct and the government, you know, is for all the right reasons, they're, they're sort of outlawing a lot of these things now because when you get into the environment, that mercury of course is polluting the environment. Not a good thing for the environment, but a great thing for attracting bugs and insects. Um, when you get into Mercury vapor bulbs, you're going to have some extremes. You're going to have these small extremes. You're going to have the big extremes. All right. Frosted bulb versus clear. I don't really care. I, I used frosted bulbs for many, many years, and I still did just as good. I know there are people out there that will argue that down to the core. Whatever works for you, man. Um, the frosted bulbs versus clear bulbs. I use clear now because it just happens to convenience, but I will still buy if I can find good prices on mercury vapor bulbs. I will still buy frosted bulbs. I'll just buy what works for me and my budget. So should you, okay? You get that. So you get these cool bulbs, mercury vapor bulbs. Now you're gonna have a choice. You wanna go with ballasted or self-ballasted. And if it's a ballasted bulb, that means you're gonna buy like a security light at a hardware store and it's gonna have a big, huge, heavy box that comes with it. That's all the internal electrical guts that are gonna make the bulbs work. If you can, if you can afford it, if you can go to the next level, find self-ballasted bulbs. Again, no different than this little UV bulb that I showed you that BioQuip sells. If you can find some nice mercury vapor self-ballasted bulbs, especially these small little ones, this is a 160 watt bulb, perfect for my cause for travel and for what I do right here in the neighborhood and what I do locally, all right? Perfect for that because it has a standard base that means it screws into a standard base. This is the same kind of thing you'd use in your house or in your workshop, simple stuff. And it's self-ballasted. There's no big heavy box of electrical guts that are gonna come with this. Plug them in, turn them on, make them work. Now you have UV and you'll have mercury vapor. Super simple, no big heavy stuff. Not a lot of, you know, not a lot of hoopla involved. So Think about it, decide where your budget is, think about where your budget lies and, and do a little bit of internet research and you can find things. You can buy some ginormous self, this is a 400 watt self-ballasted mercury vapor bulb. This thing would screw into a mogul base, that's a big ceramic base, it screws into a big ceramic base and it would run just like this. This is a self-ballasted 400 watt bulb. Um, some people have preferences, they like their big, light bulbs. Um, I still prefer smaller size bulbs for travel and convenience. Um, it's probably a lot like putting smokestacks on the back of your pickup truck. You don't need to do it, but it might be cool for you. So knock yourself out. Go with smokestacks on the back of your truck or just keep it simple. That's, that's my way of it. If you end up with these security light systems that have the big ballast, that's fine, but you're going to have to do some modification on those to make them a little more portable, or you can build a system just for your house to keep things simple. All right, um, keep it simple, guys, for real. All right, this doesn't have to get high tech. It can get a little expensive if you let it, um, or you can keep it cheap. You know, those bug zappers are a great way to get some UV on your on your bugs. Now, guys, on another note, all right, I want to bring in, you want to avoid sodium 
you want to avoid uh, the LED, um, you know, stay away from that. Stick to mercury vapor, stick to ultraviolet. Um, try not to go too far out of those realms. There are some, some people that are, they're working and, and doing a little bit of self-research on lights and they're finding out that there are, you know, there's, there's some types and systems that are out there that are starting to work almost as well as mercury vapor bulbs. But the truth is, um, right now the way things are as simple as it is, um, as affordable as it can be, your best bet is probably to stay away from halogens and LEDs you know, and definitely stay away from those orange sodium bulbs because that's not going to work for you. Your light systems should look pretty much like this. Now, cool. Let's go a quick shopping list. All right. How, whatever bulbs you choose to buy, whatever light system you choose to use, that is your call, your preference. Some people use amazingly huge, expensive, totally cool systems for bringing in bugs and insects. I get it, whatever works for you. Um, but you're gonna want a rope of some sort because um, hanging up the sheet is important, all right? You're gonna want a sheet, essentially, but you need a rope, so that's one thing on your shopping list. You're gonna want some sort of clamp lights to put light bulbs in, and whether you're using the mogul-based bulbs and then you're gonna want a clamp or such with the mogul base, obviously that's not gonna work. So you're gonna want the right size equipment to work with the light size bulb, the right size bulbs. But either way, I like to use the clamp ball, the clamp sockets, some rope to hang between two trees or two posts, whatever the case is. A big sheet, nice big white sheet to hang down. And I like to put it low enough that I can get some of that sheet onto the ground. If you want to use a second sheet, go ahead and do that. So two sheets, put that on your shopping list, two sheets, one for hanging and another one for on the ground out in front. Because look, if you don't have a sheet on the ground in front of your lights, bugs are going to come to the sheet and they're going to fall to the ground. Now you'll lose them in the grass or you'll lose them in the fields or worse than that, you're stepping on them when you're up there looking at the bugs that are on your sheets. Put a sheet down on the ground in front of your light stations like that, so that way you can see what's going on. Now, if you're like me and you like nice, tight stations, look at that picture right there. That's a nice, that is about a classic bug man setup right there. Really nice, tight sheets. They're not crinkled and blowing around in the wind. And look, man, if, if, if your sheets, if your light station's blowing around in the wind, that's not a good thing. Bugs can't hang on to that. So you want to make it nice and straight and see. I like to use tent stakes. I tack, I go right through the sheet, man, and I tack tent stakes down into the ground, and that makes it solid. It's like a white wall with lights hanging in front of it, and then you got your nice sheet on the ground, and I, I tack everything down. I put it nice and tight, just like in those pictures. All right? Clothes pins. Clothes pins. These are like, these things are like gods, man. I use these things for not only attaching the sheet to the rope, but I also use them for, you know, keeping cords organized where you want cords to stay on your seat. Lots of clothespins. Have those things handy too. And you can buy a pack of those for a couple bucks. All right, no big deal. Power strip. You're going to need power to run your lights. And whether you run a generator or you plug it into the wall or whatever it is you're doing, because um, I do both, all right, you're going to want a power strip because you're hanging multiple lights. You're going to want that. Uh, this will also protect you from over, you know, from surges and different electrical problems that might occur. It protects your bulbs, okay? Because you don't want your lights breaking, man. If you're going to spend money on that kind of stuff, the last thing you want it to do is break on you. Not good. I'm really good at breaking light bulbs. I just want to tell you that now. I'm, I'm klutzy like that, and I will break light bulbs. So I'm super careful about how I store things and how I organize things and how I treat things when I'm working with them because um, I'm that guy. All right? So that was a lot. It was a lot to throw at you, but you know what, guys? It gives you the rundown of what you need. All right? Cool, quick info. Um, where can you run lights? Anywhere you want to. Your neighborhoods, your parks. You know, Get permission and do this. When? You want to do this late at night. Look, don't run lights and turn them off at 11 o'clock because you and your kids are going to bed. If you do that, it's just don't bother because you're missing out on everything. Most of the nocturnal, the really big, you know, larger nocturnal insects aren't even going to fly until 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. So you want to set these lights up between 8 and 9 maybe at the latest, and then you want to just turn them on and let them burn. And, and whether you turn them off at two or three in the morning, whatever you prefer to do. Again, you're making calls here. So I like to let my lights burn all the way till daybreak because there's a lot of moths, like those cecropia moths, remember those, they're gonna drop out of the sky and come to lights between three and four in the mornings. So if you let those, the longer you let things burn, 
the more you know the more bugs you're going to get the uv lights that is critical because look if you just hold if you just hang up the mercury vapors you're going to attract a lot of a lot of bugs in the problem is there's not a lot of uv coming off of these bulbs there is some in there that's why that's why these bulbs work so well but you're not going to get a lot of bugs to stick around. A lot of your insects are going to come in and they're going to hang and then they're going to they're going to go. The more UV that you punch onto your light stations, the more UV that you hang up, the more those bugs are going to relax and chill out and fall asleep and stay there all night long. That is key. All right? So UV mixed with some ultraviolet or the uh, the mercury vapor lights, mix those together and you you can't go wrong. All right? Hang up your lights, hang up your sheets, hang up your stage, build a little place, fire those lights up, and bring those bugs and insects in. It's a cool thing to do. And yes, it can get very technical if you let it, but it can also be very simple, very affordable, and most of all, fun. Kids love this stuff. Let them stay up all night, feed and water them, let them see what kind of bugs are coming in. It's a ton of cool bug fun, man. I love blacklighting. And you can blacklight anywhere in the world you want to, in your backyards, or you can blacklight in Arizona, or you can blacklight out west, or you can go wherever you want to go, man. I've blacklight down in a rainforest. I've blacklight overseas already. So you can do this kind of thing, and it's a bunch of fun to see what kind of insects are coming in. Okay, so you get it. I think we're just about done. I ran out through that pretty quick, but I just wanted to give you that quick hit. Just a primer, get you set up. Look, right now is a good time to start. You gotta start getting set up on this because we're all gonna be running lights here uh, real soon because even Pennsylvania has some cool bugs that are flying right now. They're seeing polyphemus moths and luna moths and, and I know the cecropias are just starting to pop. So, so we got a lot of really cool moths and bugs and insects that are out there cruising around at nighttime that you run lights, you'll see them, all right? Guys, look, find me over on YouTube, man. Hit me up on YouTube. Like and subscribe because that's how I know that that's what you, that's the kind of content you want to see. There's a bunch of good content over there. So hit me up. You're going to find us also over on Instagram. You're going to find us all over social media now. We're, we're expanding the platform. So we're looking to go as many places as we can and bring you guys a ton of cool bug fun. Because you know what, man? I'm Ryan Bridge Bug Man, and that is what I do every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Guys, look, we're all done. I want to tell you guys, look, be well, be safe, be kind. Let's all be kind to each other, shall we? Please. All right, guys, have a great day. Take care.